Ancient astronomers used to think that the world was flat. Their idea of what the Earth was was a flat disk floating in a giant ocean. But by the 6th century, philosophers like Pythagoras had worked out that the Earth was actually round. But there are still some people out there who believe that the Earth is flat. So what evidence is there that proves them wrong? Well, let's take a look at some of the key pieces of evidence that prove that the Earth is round. Evidence number one, gravity. In 1687, Isaac Newton published his work, The Mathematical Principles of Natural Philosophy. And in it, he stated his laws for gravity. Now, these laws say that any two objects with mass, so that's me, you, cars, the Earth, the Sun, were all attracted towards each other. And the strength of this force that we're attracted to each other by depends on the masses and the distances apart of the two objects. And it's this key property, the distance between the two objects, which proves that the Earth is round. If you drop an object while stood on the Earth, the object will fall directly towards the center of it. That's how gravity works. Now let's say we live on a spherical Earth. If I drop this banana here, the banana will always fall directly straight down. And that's because the center of the Earth, wherever you are on its surface, is always directly beneath you if we live on a round or spherical Earth. But if we dropped a banana on a flat Earth, the banana would always fall towards the center of a disc. This means that on a flat Earth, if some people dropped the banana, it would actually fall sideways to go towards the centre of the disc Earth. And the fact that we never see this happen means we know that we must be living on a round Earth. Evidence number two, the horizon. If you ever go to the seaside or a port or a harbour, you might see some ships sailing off into the distance. If you look long enough, you might notice that they seem to disappear after a while as they seem to go over the edge of the horizon. Now, there are two options as to what are happening to these ships. Number one, if we're living on a flat Earth, these ships are sailing off of the side of our disc-like flat Earth, and they're falling off into space, and the ships will never be seen again. Option number two, we live on a spherical Earth, and all that's happening is these ships are going over the horizon. Because of the curvature of the Earth, at some point we can no longer see the ships because they've gone over the horizon. Now, as we see ships again and they don't seem to disappear after falling off of the Earth, it's pretty safe to assume that we live on a spherical Earth. Evidence number three. Look at the Earth from an aeroplane. Now, many of us would have been lucky enough to have gone on an aeroplane before. Some of us might even have been lucky enough to travel halfway across the world. If you live in a country like the UK and you've ever travelled to New Zealand or Australia before, you might have noticed that you can fly either way around the Earth. You can fly west via America, or you can fly east via Asia. Now, the reason we can go either way is because the Earth is spherical. If it wasn't, we couldn't go both ways, because one way would lead us to the edge of the Earth and we'd fall off. There are even some planes which are able to travel all the way around the Earth now, and the only way this is possible is if the Earth is a sphere or round. If it's a flat disk, you can do this. And while you're up there, why not have a look out the window? When you're high enough up, you can actually begin to see the curvature of the Earth beneath you because you're so high above its surface. It's just another extra little bit of proof that the Earth is spherical. Evidence number four. See the Earth from space. Okay, so most of us will never get to see the Earth from space. But big space agencies like ESA, NASA, the Russian Space Agency have lots of images of Earth from space whether these are from manned missions, like the Apollo moon landings, or whether they're from satellites, like Rosetta. And there's one key thing you can see in all these photographs. The Earth is round. Now, you might say that the Earth is a flat disk, in which case we're just seeing the one side of the disk. However, you can see you can't see all of the continents on the Earth in these images, and that's because the Earth is a sphere, and the other continents and land masses are just on the other side of the sphere. Evidence number five. Look at the rest of the universe. We as humans have looked at millions of stars and planets over the last few hundred years. Now how many of these stars and planets are disks? None. And that's down to how planets and stars are created. When they form, lots of bits of material come together 
and all these bits of material want to be as close to the centre of the star or planet as they can be, and this is due to how gravity works. Now the only 3D object in which all the bits of material on the surface are as close as they can be to the centre is a sphere. So this is proof as to how we know that all stars and planets in the universe are spheres. And as the Earth is just a regular planet, we know that it itself must also be a sphere. But there's even more proof. The fact that the Earth casts a round shadow on the Moon, the fact we can see different constellations in the sky and then we have different time zones, all of these are just more proof that the Earth that we live on is spherical or round. It's definitely not a flat disk. I'm not even sure I want to live on a flat Earth. Imagine dropping objects and flying off sideways and always wondering what would be on the other side of the disc. Doesn't sound very fun to me. Anyway, I hope I've convinced you once and for all that the Earth is round. Thank you very much for watching. Don't forget to check out the rest of my channel. Don't forget to like and subscribe. And why not leave a comment below? Otherwise, thank you very much for watching and I'll see you guys all soon.